where my dad kind of showed me how to draw it. You know, it's in my blood. It's, yep. you know, dad, it's, it's in our family. It's like our family uh, heritage and our, our, uh, our family business. Thank you for being a pal. What's up, pals? Welcome back to another episode of Pen Tool Pals. Friendly Graphic Design Podcast between two pals. My name is Canvas Cam with Canvas Design Company. And I'm Cole from Cole Up Design. Thanks so much for joining us on another week of Pencil Pals. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Dude, This week's crazier than the rest. Yeah. Uh, With everything else going on in our both of our work lives, we're on crunch time because we have designer con this Saturday. Tomorrow, if you're if you're watching this on Friday, yeah. We're gonna be meeting in person yeah our virtual relationship is turning into a physical relationship yep sure is i'm gonna hug you (laughs) 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 not not hug virch or whatever um but all this time you're just catfishing me you're actually aaron draplin (laughs) yeah i know right (laughs) You're, I'm going to show up and I'm a little skinny guy. And you're like, wait, I thought you were fat. <laughs> <laughs> Super stoked. Little, if anyone I, who's watching this is going to designer con, uh, me and Cam are going to be walking around. Make sure to say hi. Yeah. Um, we'll pass out little flyers or something yep. like that. I got these, got these little flyers made. We have a thousand of them <laughs> and we're going to need help handing these bad boys out. Designer so con like floor is going to be like littered with pencil dog. Like flyers and, everywhere. Uh, people at designer con will be like, fuck you, pals. Maniacs! Damn yous! God damn yous all of <laughs> Literally. Banned um, from it. We're banned from designer con after this. Shoot us a DM if, if you're headed there and uh, let's make sure to meet up and say hi. Um, yeah. I think we're gonna try to find a little little brewery to hang out after and all that stuff. So yeah, you want to come hang time. out? Super stoked. I'm super um, stoked. Other than that, how's your week looking like, Cam? Uh, stressful. Um, since Designer Con is this Saturday, I just we're taking the weekend off essentially. Um, got to edit this podcast and get it out by Friday and stuff. So I'm just playing a lot of catch up and. Uh, you know, right now I'm currently working on this uh, decon graphic. Yours is done. Mine is not. Um, but I'm working on that when I should be working on <laughs> on my jobs. But it is what it is. Um, other than that, you know, things are going good. You know, I'm getting jobs out, bringing new jobs in. It's a good time. How about you, Cole? Good, man. Yeah, everything's good on my end. I feel a little overwhelmed i feel like during the holiday season like it either is ramping up or slowing down for some people and like yeah. you have like a certain client base sometimes it's just like it gets even heavier like you're doing black friday sales and they need you know everything now and like this moment because they're also like in the peak of their seasons yeah so uh dealing with that is sometimes crazy um i'm hoping to like take off a little bit of time during the holidays and kind of chill out. But at this okay. moment, I got like this long list that I need to get through. So I'm so far from vacation mode. Yeah. It's not even funny, but. I feel you on that. I, it, I've i never taken any uh, <laughs> very much time off during the holidays, but this year I do want to, so. Yeah. But uh, I'm trying to do a little couple more posts on social. Everyone who's uh, been following has been super responsive to the recent post so i've been stoked thanks for all the love out there um we've got like all the pals that like have been on the show or, or just like the ones that you just always keep in contact with like oh, yeah. on instagram so like you always you can depend on those people and you you know who you are oh yeah um, for sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're just everybody that we have on the show now is like, gassing us up they're over here like <laughs> looking at our post going <laughs> Fire! <laughs> yeah, I love that. So I, I love the little community we we built um, yep. through Pento Pals, and uh, it's just a cool thing. Like I'm excited for Designer Con because it's the first time I'm gonna be in like the physical space with really yeah. like, any other designers, and I, I probably wouldn't even go to this thing if it wasn't for you, Cam. So like, yeah, this no, is pretty. This is pretty cool. I'm stoked. Same. Um, I wanted to go two years ago, uh, but things didn't play out for me. 
um, I wanted to go just to kind of meet people. And now it's like we're going to meet people. But people know us, and so well, and we know them, and right? we know them, and there's yeah. there's a huge difference this time. Yeah, now um, it's just like a bunch of a bunch of virtual relationships, like yeah. turning into like meeting people in person, right? For sure. Like two years ago, I only wanted to you know meet like Lincoln and Aaron Draplin and stuff, and uh, I had just quit my job, so it was like I didn't have the money to, even though it's not that expensive to go. I didn't yeah. have a new car yet. But I didn't make it a priority. And this time, you know, having pen tool pals at our disposal and, you know, getting to like getting the crowd interested and, in, you know, meeting us and stuff. It was a priority this time. We had to make it. We had to do it. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> but uh, today we've got an amazing, amazing artist on the show, a legend in the surfwear, skatewear and just all around like comic drawing scene. I'm so stoked on this episode. Yeah. You want to name him? Jimbo Phillips, ladies and gentlemen. You got Jimbo Phillips on the show. Yeah, I'm so stoked. Um, yeah, no, dude. Uh, I grew up skateboarding. I wasn't that good, but I loved it. Um, Jimbo Phillips has always been an artist that I've, I've noticed and I've seen and I've known of. Uh, because his dad, Jim Phillips, the absolute fucking legend who created the Santa Cruz logo and the hand, uh, his son adopted, you know, his his art and all of that stuff. He really stepped into his dad's footsteps, uh, kind of like how I stepped into my dad's footsteps. But I was a huge fan of Jim and Jim Phillips. I've been a fan of Jimbo Phillips today is going to fucking be awesome. Yeah, so stoked. I mean, like, his work is iconic. Yeah. Uh, you can just spot his work from miles away. Miles away. Yeah. He has a style that's absolutely timeless. He's inspired and, so many, so many other artists as well. Yeah, really, really an honor to, to chat with him today. We're, we're stoked to get the ball rolling into this. Hell yeah. This is going to be a legendary episode with a <laughs> legacy, legacy guest. Well, let's get him into the chat. Yeah. Let's do it. Jimbo, what's going on, man? How are you today? Doing good. Yeah, how are you guys? Fantastic. It's uh, it's kind of surreal getting to talk to you today. I'll just, I'll nip this in the butt at the beginning. My dad was a fan of your dad's. Uh, and then growing up skateboarding, I just, Santa Cruz, it was all over the place. So it's awesome getting to talk to you today, man. Cool. Yeah, I appreciate it. Dude, yeah, and same same goes for me. Um, you're definitely a legend in the space and a huge inspiration to tons of people when it comes to graphic art. So it's awesome just to kind of pick your brain and hear a bit about your story and uh, you know everything. But just yeah. start. To start. <laughs> you want to talk about any of those pieces behind you on the wall? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, this is a recent one I did for Dirty Head. Yeah, you post that. Fuck yeah. Um, it's a screen print, uh, and it's on, uh, it's on, um, foil paper. Oh, that's sweet. I but see yeah. that little reflection of the holographic. The light hits it. It really gets this cool, like effect going. So yeah, th those are always fun to do. I've been doing a lot of, uh, well, not a lot, but some rock poster runs and, uh, there's kind of been, seems like there's been a good, uh, like the collector market has kind of been pushing it a bit. And so they bands have been kind of doing uh, runs of posters for each stop on their tour and they'll get a different artist to do a different stop. And then, you know, uh, fans can go to the show, get a poster. Yeah. And, yeah. So, and then the artists can sell some of the posters after the show and make a little extra money. And yeah. it's a good way to kind of, uh, you know, promote the band, promote the artists. It's mm. kind of, for everybody the fan you know the fans get something cool and for sure yeah i feel like i feel like the music industry has been uh appreciating the artist a lot more in the last like 10 years maybe even 15 years because right I mean, how long how much long uh, how long ago was it that you know people didn't even know who the artist was all these artists were going like unknown and whatnot so i've just okay. noticed in the last few years they've been crediting the artists a lot more doing more collabs and stuff like that 
yeah yeah it's a good time for artists to uh get their name out there and and companies are uh yeah more into pushing the name and helping the artists get some recognition you know for sure yeah especially someone like you to get hired for a band poster like you're also a recognition for them as well you're a brand as an artist like you can definitely see when you create a jimbo original for sublime or i was scrolling through your work and you have a long list of band posters that you've created but yeah you know, yeah it's, it's like band band stuff because they're always they always want something cool you know on their poster and it's usually like not a lot of uh, restrictions i mean obviously yeah. i can't be you know, racist, sexist, or uh, too much drug. Um, <laughs> too <Yeah>. much drug. <laughs> or, Just you know, a little you, drug. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just, you know, for the most part, they're pretty open to creative uh, um, ideas, you know? so Yeah, for sure. And you have a perfect style that goes right into, you know, that punk rock, like, world. You know, yeah. as far back as I can remember, like, growing up, uh, listening to you know uh head noise and all these other bands like uh, it kind of have like a uh I'm, I'm all over the place when it comes to like music because i used to run a venue but i would listen to like punk uh, punk rock bands and stuff like that and your style has always been splintered into that world for as far back as i can remember and what what better cadence is there from punk rock to skateboarding it just blends together so well you know I definitely yeah, it's always fit well together. So, it's, so rolling it's, back, like, what was that start for you to to get into drawing and to get into uh, developing the style that that's been what is today? Well, my dad is an artist. You know, mm-hmm. he's a well known artist, and he your really, dad's a legend. <laughs> yeah, he is. Um, he's retired now, but uh, when I was a kid, uh, he was just drawing all the time doing uh you know artwork for you know bands and uh companies and stuff and uh i would always just kind of like look over his shoulder see what he's working on a lot of times i just kind of pull up some paper and pencil and start drawing as well and that's awesome man i just when i was a kid kind of drawing was all i was into for a long time just because this is what my dad did and Mm -hmm. i was good at it so i just kind of like that was kind of my identity early on just kind of like I'd always meet like other kids I like to draw that was you know other kids would be going out to play sports and we'd be like let's go draw it yeah you know doodle little characters and stuff and you know stuff like that <laughs> that's and, awesome man um yeah over the years my dad would just kind of show me some you know little tricks and stuff and and he would kind of uh um you know, point me in the right direction on certain things and show me like little shading and stuff, you know, to do. And, uh, and, but I never really thought I would become an artist for a long time, even though I probably wanted to. Yeah. Um, but, um, just my, you know, my dad had a lot of like lean times and stuff and, you know, he'd always tell me how hard it was and, you know, working late nights and all this stuff. And, um, but by the time I got out of high school, um the, some opportunities kind of arose and uh i dove on them and uh started making a little money and then that was kind of like oh this is cool and I, before that i had done some uh labor jobs and kind of other jobs that i wasn't into at all and yeah work you know doing uh construction hard work or uh, i can go home and draw some you know <laughs> yeah yeah hard choice right yeah it's, it's so funny because like i i kind of have the a similar a similar story my dad was a sign painter and so and he was a character artist too so he'd kind of go back and forth uh but sign painting is what he primarily did uh but i just kind of fell into his footsteps kind of the same looking over his shoulder he'd teach me and all that stuff you know I'd, you know <laughs> funny the whole shading thing uh, what you were saying but also he told me like don't have a heavy hand while uh while sketching and all that stuff i never listened to i dug into that fucking paper and i was like Arr! but um yeah, I, I do. yeah. <laughs> that's awesome break your leg yeah. 
Yeah, so, Brett, <laughs> always. <laughs> we yeah. all have the similarities with the dad influencing like the the art world for sure. My dad was a part of uh, of the skate and surf world, uh, pretty to the core. And you know the brands Gotcha and Ocean Pacific. Oh yeah, yeah. So that was that was my dad. Um, and so it's been it's fun like just seeing the influence throughout like family lines or whatever it may be that gets you somewhere but wherever it is it's like it's fun to keep it you know continual yeah director for op or sorry he was the art director no he he was more on the the math side for sure but okay. i found a lot of his art uh his art books like when he was younger but he just never like never really showed me what he was doing with with art forever but he because he's just a math mind he he never really was trying to be anything with art um but i just i never thought he did any art and then one day found his art books and he he also did art so that was cool to know cool oh right right but uh yeah all on the accounting side all the boring stuff that we would never want to do <laughs> I had to have a pair of OP shorts. So I was just like, Mom, OP shorts are the coolest. I need a pair. Yeah. <laughs> Short cords. That's the way yeah. to get out. The cord shorts. Yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah. yeah. They're pretty Didn't realize at the time, but yeah, looking back, you're like, dang, those things were really short. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like everything back then was shorter, though. Like, I don't know. Everyone was wearing shorter bathing suits and shorter. Uh, really everything but that yes. was like the above the knee look i still think that's kind of like came back within yeah surfwear a lot um, i'm all about the above the knee shorts man i may be yeah. a little chunky monkey right now but dude i like the beginning like of the, the 2000s it started when it started going pretty low like low short you know oh, they're like down to your socks like <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly so now i think it's back back above the knee yeah in that way for a second yeah, but, uh, happy me. At what uh, at what point did you realize that, or did you discover graphic design uh, after doing like your hand drawn graphics? Well, my dad was uh, like he was like a pen and ink master. Yeah, uh, that was kind of always what I wanted to emulate. Um, I didn't really realize you know i would just have like a sharpie or a ink pen you know like a ballpoint pen or something and just you know like <laughs> yeah but he he did this like a crow quill pen like dipped in ink and you know and he a couple you know sometimes when i was younger he you know set me up with a setup and you know and i was like oh man this is hard like you gotta mm -hmm. dip one like a thing you know because i kind of like to just like go you know but uh I definitely um, got into it and I uh, learned a lot of the like techniques with that. And also like a uh, brush, dipping a brush in ink. And, but then uh, pens seemed to get better in the nineties and two thousands. A lot of better pen companies came out and a lot of fine tips and uh, real like opaque black ink and stuff yeah. like that. Um, kind of, started using more pens. I, I still like to use a brush and ink sometimes if the project calls for it, you know, but sure. a lot, of, um, you know, be efficient and kind of just go, I use a, you know, I'll use a pen just to get a nice tip on it and, you know, just go, go to town. Hell yeah. Sure. <laughs> I guess I'll rephrase it. Was there a time that you, that you switched into the digital space at all? Or are you still doing everything, uh, hand or, and do you keep it on paper the whole, you know, throughout all the process or, or do you transfer into digital at all? Um, basically I learned everything I learned was in like, uh, the late eighties with working for my dad. Mm -hmm. uh, so he showed me all these, like, you know, you got to um, ink the ink the well first you would draw the your drawing and then you would ink it on, on a good like kind of nice paper and then we did these like overlays with um, ruby lith where you had to cut out these uh, layers to, to um, isolate the colors so mm -hmm. like a real this was a whole process in itself and the, all the layers were red so you couldn't see the color yeah you're basically like, okay, this is blue. 
and you didn't really know how the drawing, how the finished thing was going to look. You're just kind of cutting out this section of say the head or something. And you're like, okay, the head is blue and you'd cut it out. And it wasn't until the actual product or ad was printed that you would yeah. see, see the final colors. It's almost but, like a reverse uh, screen print in a sense to yeah. color separation. Exactly. It was kind of the process to get, you know, to get things ready for screen printing. Yeah. And then uh, basically I learned all that stuff. And then the nineties came and computers came in and okay. kind of all kind of got tossed out the window. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, right when I thought I had just this like firm grip on everything, computers came in. But luckily I kind of realized that those, that was kind of, there was so much possibility with it. Yeah. We had already been doing a, a lot of like lettering on computers and stuff to save time. And so uh, when, when like, when I remember when Photoshop first came in and you could like color things on, on the computer, I was like, Oh yeah, I need to try that. And, um, you know, I had a small computer with like not much memory, so you couldn't really do anything too big or anything. But I remember getting, uh, dabbling with it pretty early on. Yeah. But I've always tried to maintain my uh, inking style as well, just to kind of keep that look. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, uh, you can you can lose so much detail, uh, you know, not going off of a sketch and putting it into a computer and just kind of doing all that stuff. I've, I've noticed like a lot of the life gets sucked out of my illustration work when I, you know, right. don't do a detailed illustration concept, and then when I convert it over to a vector, it's like you know it looks like clip art. Right. Yeah. There's something I've noticed that too. I've, um, you know, I was like, Oh, maybe I could skip this step and just ink it right on my uh, tablet, you know, mm -hmm. but a lot of times I'm just like, ah, you know, something's missing and then I'll ink it again on paper and I just feel better about it. And yeah. it always ends up back in the computer usually, you know, but, uh, For sure. Um, I just, I, also I've realized I like the, time off the computer to just draw on paper and kind of not look at a screen for a while yeah for so, sure nice to have that little break and then you kind of then you okay now i gotta get it back on the computer and do some coloring and for sure yeah i i screw myself because i sketch on uh, my ipad and procreate so i'm like always staring at the screen and i've kind of it, it's hard for me uh like i i love sketching on paper but I really only sketch on paper for like the very first part of the design concept. I hey. I'm so quick to moving over to my iPad. So where now it's like sketching and like actually drawing on paper is starting to become more foreign to me. And I got to spend more time away from it or away from my iPad. iPad does, it saves time, you know? It it's, does. Yeah. So there's, there's always kind of that balance of, you know, are you in a hurry or, you know, how quick do you got to get it done? Think yeah, that. exactly. I was just saying it saves paper too, you know, <laughs> yeah, it does save paper. saving the environment one graphic yeah. design at a time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just, I feel like it's so weird that, you know, I'm so out of touch with drawing on paper because I did that my whole life, but yeah, it, it is saving paper. So I should feel yeah. less bad. <laughs> and Jimbo, you must have like these, creatures and these eyeballs and skulls that you do like on lock in your head right you could just bust out like whatever your style is just without even looking at some sort of reference at this point yeah yeah i mean i have my go-to uh yeah there's definitely you know but at the same time i'm always trying to kind of you know think of something new as well you know of course Don't yeah yeah i'm a, just a huge fan of your your waves and oh. I mean, the the little droplets and the way that you're able to put the highlights and the deep shadows in. Are yeah. yeah, yeah, Wa waves are, that was, uh, basically I spent my whole like uh, high school years just drawing waves on the yeah. back of math papers and stuff, so. <laughs> and then That's uh, really funny you said that. No, uh, so I, that I spent a lot of time just kind of refining <laughs> waves over the years, you know, yeah. but. That reminds me of this math teacher that I absolutely hated. He was just like the worst and was a really mean guy. But he said to everybody, uh, 
you know, once you're finished with your math test, just like stay quiet at your desk. If you want, you can draw a picture on the back of the test. Right. Oh, so right. I'd always be like one of the first to finish, not because I was smart, just because I wanted to get it over with and draw on the back of the piece of paper. And then <laughs> yeah. I drew like these it, like crazy illustrations on the back of my, my papers and he'd to return it back to me in circle like F or D or on it or something. Jesus. <laughs> and then, and then on the back of the paper, He'd, he'd be like, if only you spent more time like uh, like studying math than you did on these illustrations, maybe you'd like pass or something. That's right. hilarious. That's so, that's... Uh, yeah, that, I think that's the life of, of an artist is not wanting to do any math and just, just get into the, to the art, you know? Yeah. Math was never my forte, so. <laughs> Still isn't and... mine. I can't even like read, dude. Yeah, <laughs> funny. I, I, I'm oddly enough, I'm friends with a few teachers uh, that I, I had in high school, and all of them are like, "Yeah, we shouldn't have uh, been so hard on you for for drawing in class because you made a career out of it." And like, yep, right, <laughs> totally. Yeah, I guess it's uh, hard for them to, you know, you never know what kid's going to kind of follow through with it, you know, or just just right. pure. <laughs> yeah for sure now when you were in high school and like drawing those waves and stuff like that I, I i remember you saying you never really thought you were going to like do something with it until you started making money but it, back then when you were drawing like drawing waves and you know you're emulating the style that your dad created and kind of making it in your own did you ever think of like you know you know moving away or because i know that you you've kind of adopted your your dad's business and are you still working in the studio that uh or his old studio yeah i am yeah cool have you yeah. it, it, to me that's amazing because that's something i've always like kind of wanted to do is you know do do something with my dad my dad's passed away but um was it like a weird transition for you to like take over your dad's studio did you have a dream of like doing something somewhere else um, well, my dad used to, you know, like I said, my dad had some hard, uh, or not hard, but like lean times mm. being an artist, you know, um, of course he was kind of, he was ahead of his time in a lot of ways. He very much was. Yeah. Um, just a lot of people just weren't totally ready for his, <laughs> you know, his, no. his art. And like nowadays people are really like accepting and really just want like uh, make it crazy you know but yeah. back, back then it was like things were way more conservative and if you drew something a little crazy people were like whoa i don't know this is yeah ages you know and it's the devil <laughs> yeah things like that you know people were just uh, as things were a lot more conservative so uh he really you know he busted down a lot of doors as far as that goes and yeah paved the way for me and I feel like a lot of artists you know just kind of uh getting that art out into the world and you know him and like you know Robert Crumb and mm -hmm. you know Robert Williams and Rick Griffin all those kind of old 60s 70s artists you know they they really uh established kind of this uh, world where this art could live you know and people you know could enjoy it for sure well, like I think that's actually a pretty good segue into maybe we could pop up some of your work and talk about some specific pieces. Oh yeah. Yeah. Did you get some stuff ready or I just, I can pull up your website. I already have your website up if that's cool with you and we can just kind yeah. of scroll through cool. a couple of pieces yeah. and whichever your you, whatever pops up that we want to talk about, we can do that. Yeah, sure. totally. Yeah. So, I mean, as far as working uh, in the studio, you know, my dad, uh, yeah, at some points when I was young, he would be like, oh, maybe you should, you know, be a lawyer or a dentist, you know, and go make a bunch of money. And, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, I got out of high school and like drawing is what I was good at, you know. And yeah. Who wasn't really my thing. So I was just, you know, and, and opportunities were popping up at the same time. So I was just kind of like, oh, I got to got to hop on this, you know. Yeah. My, my dad always said my dad always wanted me to be an artist kind of following his footsteps. But he said, my dad was very, my dad was very funny when it came to stuff like this. He, he's like, I want you to be an artist, but just don't expect fame and fortune. Yeah. <laughs> like my, uh, my dad was very, very good, but he, he didn't get quite to the level that he wanted to 
uh, and I got there at a at a young uh, at a young age. I'm not like I'm not like crazy, uh, you know, all all that stuff. But I think the level of artist that I became at like 20 is what he aspired to do in like his 60 years of living. But uh, right. he, but yeah, no, he always wanted me to do this, and but he said don't don't expect to get paid a lot because I don't get paid a lot. Right. Cool. Well, uh, first, I love your website, man. It's like a glimpse backwards, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty old school. <laughs> it's rad, it. though. I just feel like it fits your style perfectly. Like, this is the way it, it needs to be shown. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I thought about uh, updating it. I haven't updated it in quite a long time, but, uh, you know, it works. It has it has a good amount of stuff on it. And it yeah. Just Store works really well. I've been doing well with my online store. So for now, I'm just like, well, you know, if it's not broken, don't fix it kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, what year is this? 2014? Yeah. So, yeah, it's... It's rad. <laughs> Plus, you set it up kind of old school looking even at the time, you know, so... <laughs> for sure. No, I just feel like it, age, it, it, it ages even better, you know? I just think that this is, like, the type of stuff that you don't see anymore. And, yeah. like... Kind of has the same layouts and the same like everything like i'm redoing sure. my portfolio right now i'm just trying to like be original somehow and it's just i don't know it's biting me in the butt so i'm i'm still like gear have my my uh my gears turning but i just yeah. love i love it it's awesome don't, <laughs> don't touch it Jimbo. It, it, it makes me think that we think about font choices and layouts way too hard <laughs> you're, you're over you're overthinking it just yeah take a page out of jimbo's book and just rock old school <laughs> <laughs> totally <laughs> I mean, is there just, a is there a I've, certain section you want to start at oh it's wherever you like um i mean there's skate there's, i've kind of broke it into like music surf skate and then like miscellaneous stuff so yeah whatever whatever you want to talk about is cool with me cool like i said it hasn't been updated so skate um good yeah no worries well this is always a fun one to talk about is the the santa cruz hand i met shuriken shannon when i was like 14 you met him yeah i went to the uh goofy versus regular competition uh i forgot at what town it was in beautiful skate park but i had a broken uh i broke my skateboard that day and so i have him sign uh i had him sign one half of the broken skateboards in my garage right now Oh, nice. Yeah. But, yeah, he, he's not on Santa Cruz anymore, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he's a cool guy. He was fun to work with. Yeah. Um, I'm actually, uh, this just popped into my head. Uh, I'm, I know Sid Melvin. He lives in the oh. same town as me. Yeah, Sid, Sid's cool. He's a great guy. I've known him for a really long time. I just uh, saw him at, the, at Tiki Co., a Tiki Bar here. I saw him last weekend. Oh, okay. Chatted with him for a little bit. Yeah, I yeah. used to run a I used to run a skate church with a buddy of mine, Mark, who started it, and that's how I met Sid. Uh, he'd come through the shindig a lot and uh, all that stuff. But really cool amazing. guy. What was that? Uh, Sid's an amazing skater. He is. Um, but yeah, it'd be great to hear a little bit about your like your process or or anything really about how you do these crazy detailed illustrations. Yeah, I mean, the, this was a kind of a, kind of an early hand series. There hadn't been a lot at the time, and so this was kind of this was one of the first ones where we did uh, different hands for each rider. Yeah, uh, they each kind of like you know we tried to make it fit with their kind of uh, persona a bit, you know. Totally. Yeah, we that, just pulled that one with the the middle now, picture and hundreds of them done you know nowadays but uh th this was kind of early on 2014 or 15 when yeah. the, the kind of uh steam rolling back in you know totally for sure yeah and even like i think skateboards are always a, a crazy one to try to to illustrate mainly because of the shape you know you have to get yeah. something that's they're challenging it's long and tall and so you can either go vertical where everything's kind of stacked or you go horizontal where it's like a, a 
you know, a landscape. Yeah, for sure. Both have their kind of challenges, especially if you're trying to fill up the whole board. Yeah. There's also, you know, you can kind of, sometimes you can just kind of keep it between the trucks, which is cool and have some maybe wood on the nose and tail, but I've kind of always leaned towards uh, trying to fill up the whole board. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you just have like detail in literally every nook and every, cranny. Yeah. It's, it, it always seems to like, even if I mentally think I'm going to keep it and then somehow it just kind of starts bleeding out, like pretty soon I'm like, oh, there goes the rest of the board. Like, just, yeah. <laughs> things slime and stuff starts <laughs> off the side. <laughs> I would be like, if I was, if I was building something like this out, I'd be overthinking every little thing like, okay, the trucks are going to go right here. So don't put any detail right here because the <sighs> trucks are just going to cover it up. <laughs> well, that, uh, you got do have to think about that because yeah. you don't want characters space. I've done that before. You design a, you know, didn't really think about it too much. And then the truck ends up like right on his face and you're like, oh man. <laughs> yeah. Bummer. Yeah, so then you kind of like, okay, you got to keep the, keep the main image in the center of the board and then you can have other things, you know, but you, usually you don't want anything too important under the trucks. Yeah. Even though people buy the board a lot of times without the trucks on it, but yeah. uh, it's good to, I, I think it's good for it to at least look good when you set it up too, you know, for sure. Now has this ever happened? Like, I mean, you've got to have in mind like the nose to the tail, but has any, like anybody who has printed your artwork on boards, like gotten it mixed up printed it upside down is there such thing well between the nose and the tail of a skateboard no like oh i got you yeah yeah so did anybody print the the graphic upside down to where the top was printed on the very bottom of, on the tail no maybe like uh maybe one or two boards or something okay. Not like the whole run or anything that's good yeah random question on my part just out of curiosity <laughs> Usually uh, nowadays, you know, with the templates and stuff, they're pre it's pretty uh, like this is the nose, this is the tail. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of times you got to kind of uh, you got to lay it out in the template. So you kind of like double check that stuff before you send it off, you know. For sure. For sure. That's really cool. Like, were you guys using like PS sticks? Um, so, yeah, some of these... Uh, like this was a board I produced myself and uh, I got it done through um, uh, clutch distribution and uh, yeah, I just sent, sent it off and I got to run a boards and kind of just your own series artist series. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I was thinking of doing like a whole like artist series, you know, and mm -hmm. you could bring this and stuff and uh, the skateboards are, they're hard to ship and stuff too, you know, yeah. and they're heavy. so I, I kind of do them in like intervals, you know, do, do a run of boards and then you sell them out and then maybe a little later you do another run of boards. I found a cool website called board pusher where you can uh, design your own boards and they uh, print them and sell them for you. And then you, you just make a little markup on them. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Kind of convenient. It's, you know, you don't make the, the most uh profit on it but you do well i mean you can mark it up as high as you want but it's still it's uh it's just convenient you know so for sure it's what's, that? what's that website called board pusher board pusher board pusher yeah yeah it's pretty cool i've just been i just kind of uh been delving into it a little bit setting up door on there just just to have boards available for people that want them yeah that's sick for sure I've always wanted to design a skateboard for, you know, my business is called canvas design, but I always wanted to just do something like that. Just kind of stretch my illustration muscles for myself. Oh, you should go on. Really? Uh, it's really yeah. cool. Uh, yeah. You can, you can put anything on a board that you want. They even have a uh, free artwork you can, you can use and stuff. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we'll be needing that. Right. Jimbo? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might. <laughs> you know if you were in a pinch you know or some for a client uh, oh yeah <laughs> i'm gonna go buy the jimbo phillips uh, stock yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> with that but uh you know if, if we're a kid that's just like looking to you know design a board he's never designed one you know and yeah. didn't do you could mess around with some 
patterns and whatnot, you know? For sure. So I've kind of like skipped ahead and went into the, the, uh, the rock art category. Oh, yeah. But, uh, is there like a, a dream band that you never really thought you'd do any work for and they came along and it ended up being like a dream client? Um, yeah, I've had a few of those, uh, basically, I mean, I started off just doing like local bands, you know, mm -hmm. like there's bands helping my buddies. I had a lot of friends that were in bands and stuff. So, uh, you know, they'd be like, Oh dude, do us a, a logo or, uh, you know, we do a flyer or something. And then, uh, I had a silk screen press in my garage and I started printing, printing posters. So, uh, with screen print ink, you know, and, mm -hmm. uh, that on i got super into that and uh was doing a bunch i was in a band and uh i originally started doing them for our band oh yeah knew the collectability of like a screen printed poster so we'd we'd show up to these like punk gigs at a vets hall or something and uh i'd have like screen printed posters and people were like whoa whoa what the heck is it whoa these are crazy and mm -hmm. <laughs> but they, they were a lot of fun and then awesome. uh, yeah and then eventually uh like one of the first big bands I did was uh DOA. Mm -hmm. That was like a you know, a band I was into when I was a kid. So I was that was like really cool. But then I showed up to the gig with like these posters and the singer came up to me and he's like, Hey man, that's my band on there. <laughs> okay. And you it's hired like, me to do this. <laughs> it was like this big dude and he was like kind of in my face. I was just like, Oh, I was like, here you can have some, and he's like He's like, no, I'll take all of them or something. Jeez. I was like, whoa, the promoter said I could do this, so you can't just take them all. And yeah. With them, I ended up giving them like half the posters or something. And Jeez. Yeah. yeah. So that was a, a little learning learning curve there. <laughs> yeah. I had that happen a couple times early on where the bands would come up and they'd demand all these posters. And I only had like 50 posters. You know, I didn't make that many. So mm -hmm. they 20 posters or something i was just like oh man that kind of cuts into my you know i was hoping to get my money back on these you know yeah like, right exactly so when you're drawing out like let's say this for example um do you need to look at any sort of reference of like the human anatomy or are you able to kind of just draw this out from your from your mind um something like this i think i just drew from my mind um Sometimes if it's uh, if it's a really intricate pose or or a movement, I'll need mm -hmm. some rep, you know, to kind of get the way the body moves, you know. Something like this. This was a little kind of like free flowy. It's just kind of like arched and you know his arms spread out. So I think that something like this I would have just probably drew a lot of time. Like if it's like um like a certain sport, you know, or something like a basketball maybe or i don't know something where you like there's a certain motion that maybe is hard to capture sometimes yeah it almost reminds me of like like jersey shore cartoon art too you know and they do the caricatures right right <laughs> it's always just such a cool style so this is one of the ones i screen printed or like venice beach yeah uh, but again, with the waves, like you have the the perfect amount of like boldness in all of your lines, and then you have these highlights that shine, and then all this detail within like the movements of the water and little bubbles. It's like so epic. You say yeah, you screen printed this one? I did. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, it was one of my more. Uh, this kind of when I was getting it dialed in a bit. They were small posters. They were like eleven by seventeen. Okay. To manage. Most of the posters I've been doing now are uh, 18 by 24, which is more of a, a real poster size, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, I've, uh, I've got to work with some great bands. You know, I, I do a lot of stuff with uh, Slightly Stupid and Dirty Heads. And Dirty Heads I, is cool. Tennis posters, that was, uh, that was a big one. And then uh, I did a Metallica poster. That was Fuck cool. Yeah. So, yeah, I've got to, I've got to dabble with some some good bands that yeah really it's always a get it's always a little charge you know you get get excited you know For sure. <laughs> was it cool like 
were you a Metallica fan uh, and then got to work with them? I know a yeah. lot of people in like the punk rock scene, they don't really necessarily like Metallica, but were you a fan oh. of theirs and was it cool getting to work with them? Oh yeah. I was, uh, I've always kind of, uh, been equal parts, uh, punk and metal. Yeah. yeah. I got it. I was probably into metal before I was into punk just cause it was more accessible early yeah, on. Yeah, For sure. Uh, you know, I was into like ACDC and Iron Maiden and stuff like that. Yeah. And, uh, and then I discovered punk a little later, like Sex Pistols and, uh, you know, early Dead Kennedys and stuff. And like MXPX uh, and all them. Yeah, but I never I never looked away from metal. I've always enjoyed that, too. So, you For know, sure. Yeah. I never I was never, like, too strict about my musical taste. Like, I can only listen to this. Or Yeah. Only- <laughs> <laughs> I remember there was, a, there was a weird transitional period for me to where I went from listening to, like, green day and then i got into hardcore music and i just stopped listening to all the old bands i used to listen to and i just got really into like hardcore and just that's the only thing i can listen to now i'm gonna go to go to shows and mosh pit (laughs) you get yeah kind of uh when your your taste gets used to like uh, a little more intense music you know and then yeah sometimes you listen to like the older stuff and you're like this isn't as intense as i thought it used to be (laughs) yeah Now that I'm getting older, I, I'm I'm coming up on 30. I'm you know, I'm still fairly young, but like I'm starting to just go like I want to listen to whatever I want. I can listen to Gideon today, and I can listen to Descendants later on. Like you know, I yeah. just put on a fucking playlist and just go. Especially when it comes to art, music influences art in so many different ways and gets you into a certain vibe. I find myself you know just getting in the right mood, and and it just inspires so much. Yeah, you're not always in the same mood to listen to the same music, you know, some different foods you want to hear. Yeah. That fits the mood, you know? And when I really, when I'm really angry about life, I just put on Gigi Allen and I make some really fucking weird shit. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, sometimes I listen to reggae while I'm working or sometimes I'll listen to cattle decapitation, you know? Hell yeah. (laughs) Depends on what mood I'm in or what I'm drawing or you know for sure it's funny you say reggae because like i totally i totally get it now like i can i can see you know that vibe in this stuff yeah (laughs) sure yeah definitely you just got like some uh, some signature things in all of your artwork that just make it stand out as yours Mm -hmm. and you know, we talked about the wave, your bold lines, a lot, you know, you have those half tones in it. I was, I was looking like deeply into some of these where you're able to just like pull out the craziest, coolest little cartoon, like figures and, and like people and pinups and just random punk guys. Like yeah. all of this takes so much time and detail to do. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. It does. It, it, art is very time consuming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's for sure but yours is like the most next level yeah. um like what what would something like this take you how you know how long would this take to illustrate yeah that one that one took quite a while i had uh you know i had people a few people they were like certain people that had to be like recognizable as oh, yeah. they are so that's always tricky you know if you're just drawing a random character you can kind of just make them look however you want but yeah, uh right. And there's a few of those in there, just random characters. But also, there's a few guys that like, oh, we want uh, Jordy Smith in there, or right. Jack O'Neill, or you know. So I had to, you know, I had to look accurate. So then you got to go back and check your reference, and uh, you know, it's it's, and then that takes more time, you know, because yeah. not just drawing. You're like, okay, got to go, you know, look through files or look on the computer or whatever. And that that one took probably, uh, man. Might took like ten days or something. I can believe it. Yeah. Well, from start to finish, you know, the yeah. there was the whole phase. It took you know a couple days to kind of get that going, and then uh, and then inking it, and then coloring, and so each thing was like a couple days, you know, mm-hmm. and then a couple days of probably just looking at references and uh, people, you know, what you know, a photo that I could use, uh, 
showed the guy well and you know i could see what his face looked like or something yeah. and then they had certain logo placement i had to get right and stuff like right. that of course yeah with these two i feel like you could just keep looking at it and be like oh you know i think i i think it needs a shark fin right here or oh you know i think it needs a, a pelican right here like things that you could just continue to add and add and add like is there just no stopping for you oh yeah it gets hard to uh, know when to windows like let off the gas you know yeah i can imagine but, like the consistency between the i know i'm i know i'm pointing but the consistency with the rail going all the way around is you know it's attention to detail like i i, I really look into that kind of stuff because even if you look through the tent there's the railing but then there's the bushes through the railing and it's yeah, like sure. that's when you know you have like a phenomenal talent is when that much detail is kept in mind the entire time. I wish I could zoom in even more, but you know, like you just have fun with it too. Like you put a little alien guy like in the crowd and you, you know, you have someone holding a surfboard and yeah. like yeah. you get crazy with it. Well, I like it when you, uh, you can kind of look at it from a distance and like, you're like, Oh, that's a cool like little surf scene. And then you like, Oh, wait a minute. What's that guy doing over there? And, yeah. and then you, getting closer and pretty soon you're like looking at little guys in the background and you know so that it's always fun to do that kind of stuff so cool. for sure. yeah. That, yeah. that was kind of my dad's uh my dad was really good at that and that, that's always uh i was always fascinated with that how he could do that so i've always uh wanted to incorporate that into my art you know cool. mm -hmm. and I, i've realized how hard it is you know like you said it's like it, it uh it can be very time consuming but uh when you get that result you know it's like so rewarding you know yeah totally, totally. yeah just and even like in here you have like this <laughs> cave monster that you wouldn't even see if you looked at it like two times right mm -hmm. right yeah, yeah i like I like that when you might not see it all right away you, maybe like you know your third or fourth look at it you're like oh wait a minute what's that guy back in the cave yeah <laughs> totally you just have so much fun like it, it looks fun to make this if that makes sense i mean yeah. you you definitely you know should put so much effort into your art and it shows it's it's yeah. really amazing yeah i, I always kind of i like to have a fun element into it you know um I mean, sometimes I like to do serious stuff, but I don't know. I always kind of try and incorporate a little either humor or fun aspect to it, even if it's something like pretty gnarly, you know, just like mm -hmm. some little like joke or something or something funny. You're like, oh, look, at there's a there's a thing right there. It's, you know, you weren't expecting. Yeah. Right. I think it's crazy, too, how like any little small element in your larger scenes can be pulled away and just be like the most bold and perfect mark by itself. And like, this is something that just stands out to me as like such a graphic element, but yet you're able to create this by, you know, your, your drawing. Yeah. 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 This, this was one that uh, I had in a, in a sketch pad for a while and I always thought it was a cool idea. And I was always kind of looking for uh, somewhere to use it, you know, and and then I was doing some surfboards for uh, Santa Cruz. They had like a surf surf team and uh, Matt Archibald. He was kind of a iconic classic uh, legend when I was younger. And uh, I was like, oh, maybe he'd like this kind of eagle idea I've had for a while. And I threw mm -hmm. it out. Oh, yeah. And, but it was kind of like like a short lived. Uh, short-lived thing you know it didn't it didn't it, i think it made it on a couple boards and i always liked the art so much so i was like you know i need to run some stickers of that and just yeah kinda, for sure took the, his name off there and just put like you know a little slogan on the, on the banner and kind of so i still have it as a sticker oh yeah so cool man i'm gonna it, skip to uh other art um I think this is where you get into some of your like your gremlins and your uh i i don't want to misname them what would you call something like like this guy uh he's well i have uh that guy's actually his name is carl <laughs> <laughs> but i have uh i have kind of reoccurring little i have goblins i do mm -hmm. i do freaks 
I do creeps. There's like a skate creep, a surf freak, uh, you know, uh, um, there'll be a, a pizza goblin. Or, yeah. you know. This is like a goblin, right? Uh, that's a creep. 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 All right. <laughs> yeah, but he's kind of a, he's kind of goblin-ish, you know, like mm -hmm. one of the, a guy like that could go either way. I just kind of, whatever fits with the name, you know, like, yeah, like that's a pizza freak, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> hell yeah, for sure. It's just so stylized. It's, it's really epic. Yeah. A lot, a lot of these, like those simpler, like, uh, kind of just like, um, individual characters. I was kind of thinking of like the screaming hand, how it's just like a standalone, like image, mm -hmm. no background or like, it's just the, the hand and, that's all it is and it kind of it could fit anywhere so i was thinking of that with like the pizza guy and the and the skate creep and like i was like i like these like just standalone little characters that could just be their own little thing you know and For sure i also think it's crazy when i look at your like black and white stuff how you're also able to take everything you have and just turn it down to what's the most bold like aspects of your art yeah i mean my dad always told me if uh if it works in black and white, you know, then you're, you're doing it right because yeah. uh, it should be able to stand alone in black and white. And then uh, if you add color, then that's just like a bonus, you know? Yeah, for sure. It's totally I, right. I yeah. always live by that too. I always design everything I do in black and white first and then add the color second. Yeah. It, it's a good, it's a good practice to do. For sure. Col color can hold a lot of, uh, you know areas on on its own but when it works in black and white it's always it's always beneficial totally i was looking at something like this before we started and i was just amazed by like how bold you're able to get your pinups like are you looking at references for your pinups or are you able to crank this out like with your mind too uh this one i think i definitely used a reference yeah i was i was trying to go for a little more of a realistic vibe on it yeah um, we, we were going for uh, Jessica Rabbit meets um, Bomber Girl kind of. Nice. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> those are. Awesome. Now, remember how I told you I always drew waves on my papers. Uh, girls were probably number two. So <laughs> I, I, I drew a lot of boobs in high school, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah was, You're not alone. You're not alone. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, it was a good motivation, you know, because you kind of get a little you know, show your buddies and they're like, Oh man. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so your dad, your dad uh, created the screaming hand, right? Right. Iconic to skateboarding. It really just changed the game in a lot of uh, ways in the world of art. How is it for you to be able to re to, uh, to look at that and get to recreate something your dad made so famous? Is that like the coolest thing ever? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, uh, it's so iconic. It's probably one of the, you know, top, top three most iconic skate images, you know? Yeah. yeah. If not the, if, if not, not like the one. most one. Yeah. yeah. Cause I remember You're being I, I, in growing up, I drew that fucking thing so many times. Yeah. You know, it was it was the thing of practice, you know, it especially it was like a tattoo artist having to do an apprenticeship, you know, having to redraw shit over and over and over. You know, yeah. that the Santa Cruz screaming hand was mine. You know, I'd, yeah. I'd draw that thing like any other. Yeah, it's it's fun to draw. And there's yeah. some. He had a, the 30 year anniversary of the screaming hand and they, they had a big art show. It traveled around the world and uh, all these different artists did their versions of the screaming hand. That's so cool. I was re literally realizing that there's just like no end to the possibilities. Yeah. <laughs> it's sure. just like, it's phenomenal to see all these different uh, visions of it, you know? So it's cool to kind of uh, come up with your own and think of different ways to do it. Totally. And you're like, you're at like the top of the top of the food chain when it comes to doing it too. Cause it's like, not only are you getting to recreate your, your dad's you're carrying on his legacy, but you're looked at as like, you know, the Santa Cruz illustrator in, in, to, to do it now. Right. Yeah. I mean, I kind of figure like 
who better to do it than me, you know? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> no one. Sure. If, if, I, if Santa your, Cruz ever came child. to me, if Santa Cruz ever came to me, which they probably wouldn't, but if they ever did and go, hey, can you do like the screaming hand? I'd be like, no, <laughs> that's, no I can't do that. That's a yeah. lot of pressure. <laughs> well, I mean, I kind of feel, I look at it like, uh, you know, um, I kind of, I'm kind of the heir to the throne in you a way. Are. Yeah, like, uh, I mean, anyone else that's drawing it and getting paid in a way is kind of just kind of copying it, you know, as mm -hmm. where, where my dad kind of showed me how to draw it. You know, it's in my blood. It's, yep. you know, it's it's in our family. It's like our family uh, heritage and our, our, uh, our family business, you know. Oh, yeah, so, it is. Uh, you know, people should tread lightly when it comes to that. People think they can just uh, do whatever they want with it. And like, you know, I always have people like, oh, I want it on this and I want it on that. And I'm like, mm -hmm. nah, just like put it anywhere. You know, it's not like a piece of clip art. You can just do whatever you want with it. So totally. You know. No, it's it's awesome. It's it's a true pleasure going through all your work and, and seeing like what you've created here and a little backstory on, on how you create it and what the... Uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. It's cool to uh, you know share it with you guys. What's uh what's life for you now? Like, are you uh, just continuing? Like, are you still pumped every time you get on a piece of paper and creating and pumping out new ideas? I am. I'm I'm really still excited. You know, to to take on new stuff. Um, I find myself uh, you know, kind of taking on too much at times. You know, I need to like, okay, I can't just do every single yeah thing, but like. You know, people call up and they're so enthusiastic. You know, oh, I love that one thing on it. You know, and then I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. And then <laughs> like twenty jobs I got to do this month, or so, you know, it's like we were literally just talking about that yeah. uh, before we jumped on. How where it's just kind of like people get stoked and our workflow just list keeps on bumping up higher and higher, and it's yeah. like, you know, all right, well, it's just going to be a busy month. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean. I like the, uh, I like to have stuff to do and I like staying motivated and, um, you know, I haven't got, uh, haven't got tired of it yet. So I'm just, uh, I'm stoked to just keep it, keep it firing along. And, and, uh, my son is starting to kind of get into it a little bit now. So I'm awesome, man. So we got like third generation kind of coming up the ranks and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun to get him into it and, uh, and, you know, just keep, keep the, juices flowing and keep the the phillips art alive you know oh yeah dude that's, that's awesome, awesome. Uh, it, it i can only hope the same for myself when i have kids you know being able to give that that talent over to them and teach them the ways i don't want to shove it down their throat because it was very much shoved down my throat growing up right. and i almost i almost didn't pursue this this life because so right. I, I want to have a healthy relationship with art so that I can give it over to my, my children uh, and, you know, have them love it too. So that's great that your kid's getting into it. Cause that, that's just heartwarming to me. Yeah. I mean, it, it can be tricky, you know, it's uh it's kind of a fine balance, you know, mm -hmm. I, uh, my, when my dad kind of offered me some jobs and at the time I was, you know, 19 or so and really the last thing in the world i wanted to do was work with my dad you know yeah. just, <laughs> i was kind of just getting to that age where i was like ready to just like you know fly away and not have to listen to him anymore yep and here you know i was kind of like locking into like okay he's gonna be like breathing down my neck you know <laughs> yeah and, 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 sure. at times you know just because at the age i was at and uh you know, my dad can be pretty intense and he would just be like, nope, do it over. And I'm just like, what? What do you mean? Do it over? You know, it's great. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. He would just, you know, he was, he, but uh, I realized I learned so much through, through all that, you know, process. Yeah. I really uh, cherish it now. For sure. That's amazing. Well, it was a true pleasure having you on, Jimbo, and, and thank you so much for sharing your story and your work with us. Uh, for everyone watching, if this is your first time being introduced to his work, which I'm sure it hasn't, you yeah. know, um, you've just been blessed by <laughs> everything Jimbo and his dad has created. Um, and if you're not following him already, Jimbo, you want to tell them where they can follow you and, and any platforms? Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram at Jimbo Phillips. 
Um, you can go to my website, jimbophillips.com. I have a web store there. I have t-shirts, stickers, um, all kinds of fun goodies, socks, yeah. uh, cool stuff. And uh, or Facebook, uh, Jimbo Phillips, pretty easy to find. So yeah, yeah, hit me up. Uh, I usually always answer all my messages and stuff. So uh, Very cool. yeah, if you want to, um, you know, show me your art or whatever, I'll, I'll take a look at it or any, any of that, it's all good. So yeah, keep creating and uh, um, yeah, have fun out there. Hell yeah. <laughs> Not a bit, there could be a better way to end it. So no. thank you yeah. for being a pal. Yeah. Uh, thank you for being a pal, Jimbo. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me on you guys. I'm stoked. probably thought the episode was over but it's not and there's only one thing left that you need to do before your pen tool disappears this week and that is like subscribe and go watch these videos if you haven't so thank you and see you next week pal